so pretty much I give you a crappy thing of what you need to use. So pretty much what you need is a knife like this one. It's the, I got it off. Well, there's an NT cartridge, NAA. Um, from the videos I watch, I will link them down below. I watch Tent School Online. It's actually a pretty good channel. So pretty much you want to do three to four clicks. One, two, three. I leave it at three. And you want to use less than 30 degrees. So you want to lay it as flat as possible like this and just cut the film. Um, just in case you guys ask, I did order it already pre-cut from Lexan Film. So yours might have to actually cut the whole shape. I didn't want to bother to do that since I was a beginner. I probably should have done it but it's okay so that's one you're gonna need one of these um curved triangles i forget what they're actually called i'm a beginner like i said uh, i got these at amazon as well all this i got at amazon if you guys want me to link them in the link you know i'll do it i'll link them down in the description i got a pair of three of these and it really helps out with the corners and grooves like so like putting it right there this is a shout out to Yellow Tools for letting me, um, for getting, for making amazing squeegees is what I'm trying to say. Um, really good. And you need a hard one like this one, the gold one, to aggressively squeeze it down and hold it in place so it doesn't move around like how um, I do it at the beginning. And that's, I have more squeegees, but that was for car wrapping and I still need to order the wrap for my car. But just get the hardest one you can get. You can get a 3M gold one. That's a hard one too, I heard. Some shop towels or any kind of napkins to clean the thing. When So you, it's, you're supposed to clean it before you put the window tent. So you need that. This is a little um, squeegee that came with the tent. And I just use it to clean the windows. It's not that hard. I'd say it's from a, from a 10. It's probably a 3 or 2. It's really flexible compared to the gold one. This one is barely flexible. It's like a nine or eight. And then you're gonna need some soapy water, but this time I exchanged the soapy water to baby shampoo, Baby Johnson. Any Baby Johnson shampoo, I used the orange one. I'll put a picture right now. And you wanna put, add four um, drops of water. I added seven. But um, the Tin School online person says to add four, but it really depends where you live. I live in Florida, so it's a lot hotter and humid. So I added seven, and I think that's the sweet spot for me where I live. And then I put water for the rest of it. It was filled up, and I, that's how much I have left over. And then I bought a heat gun. Well, I have a heat gun I already had that I bought from Ace. It's just any cheap old heat gun. I think it cost me $24. What you want to do is first actually clean it. Usually you would want to clean it from the outside. I still am going to clean it from the outside. But if you you clean it from the outside to be able to put it here and take off the thing. But since I'm just going to put it on here, I'll just take it off with my hands and I will just put it on immediately. So last time what I did was took take off the door panel. <laughs> And the actual, from my experience, you get more bubbles from the door than that, those quarter panels. I installed those pretty easily. Let's see how long it takes to do this one. Clean it again. So the main idea about window tinting from my experience right now is you always want to have it wet, the door and the window. You want to have those wet all the time. If not, that would be really bad. And then it's going to get stick, stuck to it and you won't be able to move it. And it'll probably get messed up, just like how mine was. 
And I'm not afraid to admit it, mainly because that's how you learn. You learn by your mistakes. I'm a big advocate of that. Yesterday I was mad that I couldn't do it, but then I remember that you can start perfect. That's not just, that's just not how the world works. For this one, I'm just gonna give it a quick wide sense. I'm not gonna be installing it from the backside, from the inside, I mean, or taking off the glue. It's just to help me clear the window and see if I see any bubbles or air bubbles. So now you wanna take your tent off. And this is gonna be a tricky part. Last time I had help from my sisters, but I wanna learn to do it by myself. So I don't rely on nobody. So what you wanna do is peel it from here. And as soon as you start peeling it, you wanna start adding water here. And water onto this window tin. So it doesn't get static. And that could mess up your tin job a lot. So you don't wanna have static in your thing. And anytime, every so often, you wanna just wet it again. I can understand why you want to attempt it. You want to put it on that side. But we're gonna see if we can do it the way I'm trying to figure out if I can do it. We're gonna just keep peeling it. And I'm wetting it repeatedly. And just like that, you want to grab it from the underside so it doesn't stick to itself and just wet it anywhere. Oh, I got stuck right there. See, that's why you want to do the thing. But you're here to learn from my mistakes. So it wasn't as bad, but it could have been a lot worse. So you want to just get a final spray everywhere. I don't know if you guys can pick this up, but. What I'm doing is just waiting it all around and waiting the window once again. And then you wanna flip it like so. I know you guys can't see, but hopefully the GoPro is helping me out. And you wanna put it onto the window. So what I would say was just put it there first and focus on the edges. Don't worry about the top. You can wet the top as much as you want, but the bottom, once it's set, it's gonna be a lot harder to make it move. So it's drying up, you wanna be fast with this. You wanna add water onto the tent and onto the window. And you wanna just slide it down like so. Pour some water from the inside. To help it slide better. And that should help it. I do understand if you guys don't want to follow my tutorial, it's not the best. You want to wait the dad so you can 
slip it more into the crevices. I understand if you guys don't want to follow my story, you guys might think that this is horrible what I'm doing. Hey, and it might be. It's my first time. And there's plenty of better tutorials everywhere. So you can just do that instead. I want stair tutorials. I just wanted to upload this. Because one of my friends told me to do it. So you want to just see as far as you can go. You want to go side to side all the way. Usually it's the corners where you're going to have the most trouble. But yeah, I understand you guys do not want to follow my tutorial. It's not the best in the world. But I just uploaded this for fun. I am not certified in any shape or form, so... I wouldn't under I would understand if you guys don't follow this tutorial. But yeah, it's just me DIYing everything. But I do know that everybody starts somewhere, so See, that's another thing. I think there's bu water bubbles in here, but in reality, you're just from over here from where I've been going up and the water's been coming down on that side. So now what you wanna do is grab your triangle tool, give it some more wet, and then you're gonna try to squeeze the film into the crevices. Like so. So what I am seeing is that I will have to cut this or just cut the bottom and then just drag it down. I might just end up cutting this I feel like that would be a lot easier than trying to drag anything down, especially if it dried up already inside. So what I want to do now is try to see if I can still drag it or not. So I can't. So what I will you do is just cut the top and make sure to not pass the line. I didn't have this problem on the other one. I, what I did have was I dragged it to the bottom and they did crumble up here so I cut here and I feel like that would be a lot easier. Well, I'm not gonna risk it and besides, you learn different techniques in order to be able to do that. So that's what I will do. And all you gotta do is just follow the shape of the mirror. Like, so I feel like this is a lot easier than what I did at the bottom because I couldn't see and at least I can see here where I'm going. You want to put your finger up like this, you want more control, I guess you would say. And you just continue to cut, slow and steady. Nobody's rushing you. And just like that. You want to keep doing that until you get to the edge of the mirror. See no more mistakes. So, like on the Bob Ross, the window tinting, I'm here saying, if you have first, if you have mistakes, it's okay. I know I'm gonna have plenty of mistakes my first time. And that's part of the learning curve. You 
trying to put it as close as you can. Like so. Look at that. Clean cut. Now on to where over here where I messed up. And just like that. Everybody says, oh, this is too hard of a job. But all I say is, the pros had, I'll leave it, to, they say, oh, this is too hard of a job, I'll leave it to the pros. But where did the pros start? They started just like this. Some people are just lazy to do it themselves, or just are scared, I understand that. But with me, it's the opposite. I wanna to learn to do most of everything that a mechanic does, or a tent, or a wrap shop does. So what I'm doing now is trying to just curve the window tint to the glass so I can just put it back faster and better. I am having some trouble here on this one. And just like that. I have cut the whole thing to shape. And it, okay, so pretty much I did cut it. So it's not that hard, you guys can see. You can just do that. Follow the pattern of the, the shape of the mirror. And just like that. I would honestly say that this side came out better than this. So I, I just went from a beginner to an amateur in just one car. And maybe I'm getting ahead of myself and the rear mirror, my rear mirror window thing might be a lot more difficult than this but I'm learning from my mistakes from that side and this and I mean I was expecting mistakes but I have this attitude where I want to do everything perfect and that side mirror took me four hours just to do the side passenger mirror and then I did three two quarter pounds and then a mirror and just under two hours, an hour and 30 minutes, and that's it. So I would say I'm doing a lot better and I'm getting better at it as I'm doing it. So now what we're gonna do is wet it again so the squeegee can glide a lot better. My goal is to open a wrap shop. So I don't know how long that will take me, but that's one of my goals in life to own a rap shop. You wanna squeeze it as hard as possible. And another mistake I did was roll down the window right after I had installed it. I didn't get a read instructions all the way, but you're supposed to leave the windows up two to three days. And I completely missed that step, and it, that's why I crunched up at the bottom. But you couldn't notice it, so that was a good thing. And the little lines that come out like this are called um, curl hands. I don't know, hands. And I had them at the bottom, but this time I have them at the top, and it's a lot better. You just squeegee out the water, and the water just comes down instead of trying to squeegee it down. And then you get a line of water, it's like how it has on that side. It's not as noticeable. But it still it bothers me because I want to have everything perfect. And this came out perfect. I don't know if the camera went down. No, look at that. That came out perfect. Oh, there's a finger right here. The camera picked it up. So what you want to do in this situation is squeegee, squeegee it down. And since the tin expands, I think, side to side, and you gotta just push it down and you can't go like that because the water won't do anything. So now I'm gonna heat shrink it so it gets a better grip and that's when you're gonna wanna use the triangle. 
wait for the heat gun to heat up, warm up. As soon as it turns orange, we should be good to go. Oh my eyes. I almost burnt my eyebrows off. So pretty much that. I just want to go like that. Give it a curve. To the side. Flip it around. Like so. So the only problem I see is, here let me actually check the back of it, of the front of it. You see how noticeable it is compared to the other one. So another pro tip that you can do that I learned from the Tin School online, like I said, I will link his channel in the description, is Use the heat gun on the other side. And what I did was use the heat gun on this side too. I put it up this close to burn down that little finger. But what you wanna do is from the other side, the three second rule, he'll explain it a lot better. I'll link the videos or his channel in the description. So pretty much what I do is put the heat gun for three seconds. One, two, three. And squeeze it down. And you're just going to keep doing it till it no longer comes out. It's gonna, it's gonna, if they're stubborn ones, they'll, you'll have to do it a whole bunch of times to heat it up. So right now it's not as big, but I'm still going to do it. Okay. What you can do also is split it with your thumb or index finger and make it smaller. It's pretty much a thing of patience, having patience. That's what it breaks down to. There's water traveling out. Heat it up again, wait for it to warm up. One, two, three. You can also do it with the water, the little bubbles right here. They tend to be a lot easier. I'm genuinely happy with how it turned out. Yeah, there's little imperfections there and there. Well, compared to that one, this one came out 10 times better. And I'd like to say that I am improving. So you just gotta look at the positive.
I'd like to think that I think it's the wind or water that gets trapped inside or humidity. And since I'm doing it outside, it's, I mean, I'm not gonna get the best results. It's right now it's sort of windy and humid and it's in the morning. So humidity is going off from the plants or whatever. But it came out nicely. I am going to cut the bottom just in case there's any sort of um, um, extra tin in there. And when I pull up the window, it won't get jammed and just rip apart. So just in case, um, you don't have to do this, but I usually just do it just in case, like the other window. is three clicks, remember, that's what, how much I do. And you can, these are the ones you can break off and there's, I don't know how many there's in there. I think like seven or ten. So I like to just do it at one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, there. And just drag it across in case there's any um, extra. It doesn't seem like it. like that and then you will do your same thing all right so we're just gonna warm up the whole bottom side It seems that my heat gun has died on me. And let me see the plug. All right, so the heat gun has died on me. So, I'm just going to squeeze it. The good thing is that I can fix this later if the heat gun decides to come back to me. At least it didn't die on me during the project. 